thank you very much for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and thank everybody here. It's been a really cool time, and I hope everybody's enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I'm going to share with you three poems to close this out, and I usually do them from current issues of CCND or Down in the Dirt, but then if I get to the last round, I might find a collection book. And I've got the Down in the Dirt January to April 2023 issue collection book. I like the title on this one. It's called Forbidden Library. Um, Somebody had a book done through me, and I have torn edges, and it has a similar torn edge even with my grandfather's photo that was used for the beer label. And I'm like, that's just the coolest thing. So I grabbed some books from our library here that, or from this library, that were actually once in a library, and I superimposed it over Greek columns. And if you look really carefully, there are actually the white little things from all of the things from the libraries that are on this, which I think is just kind of cool. But I was going to share with you two poems that are from this. I would read from the CC&D collection book, but I've read all of those to you because there are also pieces that I have read from the pre-release of the book Testament. And so I'm like, I've just read all of these for you. So I'm going to share with you two that are in Forbidden Library that also happen to be in the book Testament. Um, they are on different pre uh, themes, which means they're not going to be both about or all about uh, pro ro post Roe v. Wade poems. Um, this first one that I'm going to read is a poem that's between parts one and two in Testament, and um, and I hope you like it. Um, it is in this book. It is titled "Your Government's Keeping Tabs." <sighs> The more we love our technology, the more we get sucked in. The, the more anyone can know anything about you, and the more Big Brother takes even more from you. You think I sound crazy. You wonder why I voted, avoided owning a cell phone. I mean, until my husband told me that I needed to get one re decades after the advent of cell phones, after moving me from one progressive city to a more restrictive state in these United States. I don't care if my brother-in-law helped invent the cloud. I am not going giving another company full control over my work. Huh? You think I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I swear we forget how quickly we can lose our privacy with cameras everywhere in public watching you and your precious cell phone tracking your every motion. And don't forget that your apps keep all of your data to share with anyone from companies who want your extra money to your overly invasive government who wants to take more of your rights. This slippery slope idea doesn't resonate with most. Uh, I get that. So I suppose it makes sense for some to use period tracking apps or, or pregnancy apps on their phone. But privacy issues, they just are all but forgotten when potentially data monitoring women's pre-productivity after abortion is now nearly banned in at least 15 states can be used by our government when most of these apps have very vague privacy policies for that data that they track. You think I'm crazy, ringing that conspiracy bell too widely, wildly, but, but I don't care. It doesn't matter which abortion issue state I live in. I don't want anyone else knowing about my monthly cycles. I mean, you could tell me I'm just being too protective of what should be personal to any, personal to any human being. But I'm telling you, when we don't protect rights for some human beings, and people start by restricting women's rights in states passing abortion laws in what they claim is an effort to protect clumps of cells and not even alive. And as you turn the other cheek when rights are taken away from some, then more and more rights are taken away until eventually there'll be no one there to help you when they take you too. <laughs> Actually, that was one that I'm going to be reading in a feature in Hot Springs in the end of June. That's one of the pieces that's going in that one. So I figured I should share that with you as well. But this is another poem that is, and I've just opened right up to the page, um, Our Ships Would No Longer Cross, that is not only in Forbidden Libraries, but it is also in Section 2 of the Book Testament, which is, Section 2 is all about life and death issues, people dealing with um, depression and suicide and the like. So it's very, very different from Section 1, which is why I don't read as many from that for you guys. But this one is on that issue of 
somebody uh, choosing to end their life. Um, this is titled, Our Ships Would No Longer Cross. Um, I'll also give one other bit of info. This is for um, Curtis Raymond McGuirt. Um, he went by the name Sira, for he was our sun god. And, and so you'll hear references to that, and that is why. So this is Our Ships Would No Longer Cross. It was tough trying to take the time to see him. But, you know, you have to make time for a god. I, I hear that religion is an important thing. <laughs> and when he moved farther away, and, and then I moved farther away, well, we said we'd make an effort, but you know how life gets in the way. Life gets in the way, they say, even for gods and poets alike. And although I knew his pain in the past, he never spoke of it again until later, once I was too far away to make a difference. So once, when I was traveling at great length again, I, when my sun god happened to be closer to reach, I contacted him, asked if I could make the trip to see him again. And he was curt, cut me off, told me no. I, I didn't understand his response. I just wanted to lose myself with this sun god one more time. And I was only told after his assisted suicide that his pain was so great that he cut everyone out, became argumentative, belligerent. So maybe it was for the best that our ships could no longer cross one more time. If I couldn't help this god, and he would inadvertently hurt me in the process. I've been pushing it to the back of my mind, but I've been thinking about this lately. And I can't really get it out of my head anymore. Where is that point? That that point of no return? And, and how does each and every one of us face it without losing our minds or just giving up? <laughs> then I wonder how many people have given up and just not told anyone. <laughs> they go through the motions when the pain is not so bad that they literally need to end their life. Then again, maybe some have given up inside without even reaching that breaking point. You see, this is why I have tried to avoid thinking about all of this. Now that I'm about to cry because of the injustices to my friend, to my poet, to my wrestler, to my sun god that we all in a way worship. We all think that in a way that the light he gives helps to give us light, but we forget what we couldn't see, what we didn't know. And there was nothing we could do that for so many years he was dying inside. That's what happens to a sun. Remember your astronomy classes. After all the energy expulsion and the burning of hydrogen, they eventually run out of power just collapse. Some hate to think of the death of a star, but we learned about all of this. We should be prepared. And even though the sun god we know and love burns so bright, we have to remember this and brace ourselves for when some stars have to die. Thank you. That sounded really, really sad. So, thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to end on a short one. It's a new one. It's not in any of these books. Um, but I did read it at Animal Tales um, about travel for different places, and I hope you guys like it. It's called Finally Found Home. We were outside at night in Fair Hope under an intricate quilt of stars in the sky. Lying on the grass, stars blanketing us, resting my head on your shoulder, feeling I finally found home. You signaled in silence as a leg length away, a deer walked by, 
unnoticing, unconcerned, then saw me, stopped, and sprinted away. Was it fear they felt? For I fear they feel it for me, and never were they more safe. Because looking back, all I could think was, why does a perfect moment have to end? Thank you. I see people applauding. Thank you. It's a short little piece, but it's about how beautiful nature can be, and it was very, very nice. And and I see people already saying thank you. Intricate quilt of st stars in the sky. See, I get to see comments that are coming up from you guys, and thank you very much, you guys. Um, we might be a few minutes early, but do we have any? Where do we have to go? I don't even know the time. I can't even see it on my phone. Or should we be saying? Au revoir. Oh, I can give some news about next month. Um, July 2nd will be the next Poetic License open mic, and I will be in Chicago. I will be doing a feature that starts at 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, I might leave there a little bit early or find some place in Chicago to go to so that I can attend hosting this open mic as well. I will be there. I'll make it on time somehow. I don't know where I'll be. I might be along the beach in Chicago where my feature is or I might find a bar to go to and sit and try to be quiet or something and, and enjoy but I will be there somehow we'll make it happen but July 2nd is the next open mic and uh, I'll make it happen somehow for you guys because you guys are double plus awesome um is is everybody all and everybody's saying hello to everybody I think and I I've enjoyed the readings too um Jim, I, and then I've enjoyed hearing everything from every one of you here. Um, does anybody have any other last minute notes to be able to share? Because you know, it's just got a couple minutes left, or I think I came today and I, I've got to read. And, um, and so I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, and, I'm, and thank you. And thank you for reading again, John, because I needed to give you your space, because you host this thing, and this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you, which makes you... Triple plus awesome. You even get a better cred for that. So, um, anybody have any last minute issues they have to worry about? You can unmute yourselves if you want to say anything, ladies and gentlemen. Bots and goyles. Anybody? Anybody? Oh. I'll just say good night to everybody. Good oh, night. You're there good late. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> it's, it's becoming evening good for us, afternoon. and good night for you. And thank you for thank you for waiting with us the whole time. I know it's a different time zones for you guys, and thank you very much. And thank I'm you, Trace. To wait because I enjoy all the good poetry. <laughs> well, we enjoy hearing every yeah. single person that's here as well. So that's awesome. All thank right. you so very much. And thanks to newbies and, and my my two gym night. <laughs> every, every, I get to make cracks about it. Thank you. But thank Good you all. Night. Yeah, I get, uh, everybody. Good thank night. you. Good night, you guys. Thank you.